In the context of cybersecurity, two of the most commonly asked questions are, is having a cybersecurity certification helpful? And if yes, which cybersecurity certification should I actually go for? To answer all such questions, I, Arya from Edureka, am holding an interesting session on the topic of cybersecurity certifications, who they're for, what they cost, and which ones you need. So before I start, I just want to let you all know the topics that we have in store for today. So we'll start off with the basics of cybersecurity certifications and why you should care about cybersecurity in general. Then I'll discuss the category of cybersecurity certifications. Next, we'll discuss some of the industry leading certifications and I'll also talk about what's involved in each of them, which is basically based upon your roles or your interests. Next, we'll also help you decide the best fit for you when regarding cybersecurity certifications. All right, so let's start off our first topic for today's session. So let's talk about the basics of cybersecurity first. So security is more important to computing and the internet than ever before. And the following well-respected security certifications will not only help you stand out from the crowd, but also make you more valuable member of the IT security community. Cybersecurity skills fall into different categories, such as secure coding, vulnerability and penetration testing, breach detection, attack mitigation, and so on. Now, cybersecurity certifications come in all shapes and subjects from forensics to intrusion to ethical hacking. They are typically administered by independent accrediting organizations like CompTIA, EC Council, GIAC, ISACA, and ISC Square. Making a career in IT security requires both experience and certification. Cybersecurity certification qualifications are becoming a norm in many job descriptions today and organizations seek quantifiable ways of measuring prospective employee expertise. Also, DOD directive says that for certain levels of positions in security department, you should have one or more of these certifications to prove that you have knowledge and competency that are required within a position. Basically, DOD directives provide guidance for training of government employees who conduct information assurance functions in their position which is why I'm going to discuss some of the best and popular certifications throughout the variety of industry. Accrediting organizations often divide their programs into three categories, entry level, intermediate, and expert level. Entry level certifications are meant to ground you in the basics, foundation principles, best practices, important tools, and latest technologies. Intermediate and expert level certification presume that you have extensive job experience and a detailed grasp of the subject matter. When it comes to getting the best cybersecurity certifications, the variety of options baffles the purchasers while selecting. Hence, to make a perfect decision, it is better to focus on the knowledge and experience that it comes with. Here is a list of top-notch certifications being categorized as entry, intermediate, and advanced. As you can see in the entry level, there is MTA Networking Certificate, the very popular CCNA from Cisco, CompTIA Security Plus, and GSEC. So these are some really good certifications for beginners. Then in the intermediate level, there is a really good certification from ISACA like SSSP. From the EC Council, there is the CEH certificate. And then there is also the OSCP and ESCP certificates. For the advanced or expert level, there are CISA, CISM, and CISSP. The list here is not even exhaustive. I have just tried to include some really good certifications here. So you all can actually go check out and Google all the certifications that are available. Now let's unveil each of these. Since exam fees and renewal period can change, I haven't included it in the presentation, but I would recommend you check each certification website for the most up-to-date information. When it comes to entry-level training, you might start by considering certifications such as CompTIA Security Plus. We have our first certificate, GSEC, which stands for GIAC Security Essential Certification and SSCP, which stands for System Security Certified Practitioner. So CompTIA Plus is an ideal industry level certification. Our recommended experience for this certification is two years as an IT admin with a security focus. You will then need to pass 90 question exam with a score of 750 or better out of 900. The Security Plus certification is also among the least expensive in this list, but CompTIA Security Plus is valid for three years. You must earn 50 continuing education units, which is also called CEU, within three years to maintain your certification. CompTIA Security Plus is one of DOD's approved baseline for level two IAT security technician. However, many consider it to be basic and lacking product specific knowledge. Therefore, it may be undervalued by some employers. Despite these shortcomings, CompTIA Security Plus 
is one of the best ways to begin your security career. All right, now let me tell you all about the domains that CompTIA Security Plus certification covers. So the certification covers most domains like network security, access control, identity management, cryptographic concepts, application data, host security, compliance, and operational and threats and vulnerabilities. While taking your exam, you can expect the questions from all such domains. Next on our list is GSEC, which stands for GIAC Security Essential Certification. The Global Information Assurance Certification Security Essentials is another good to go entry level InfoSec certification that is DoD approved for level 2 IAT security technicians. Candidates are secured to demonstrate an understanding of information security beyond simple terminology and concepts. The GSEC exam is a 5 hour 180 questions open book exam. The exam is proctored and candidates pass with a grade of 74% or better. Although the exam is open book, the GSEC exam tests the candidates' understanding and problem solving skills with scenario based questions. You need to really know your stuff to actually pass this thing. The GSEC is valid for four years and can be renewed with 36 continuing profession experience points. It's important to note that this certification is called Security Essentials. It actually also implies networking essentials. I recommend that you brush up on materials from CCNA, CompTIA Network Plus, and IPv4 subnetting. The domain of GSEC includes the following cryptography, web communication security, active defense, contingency plans, critical controls, IT risk management, access control and password management, window network security, networking, and its protocols. Next on our list of certifications, we have SSCP. The SSCP certification from ISC Square is a good intermediate level security certification. You are required to have a minimum of one year of experience in one of seven designated security areas. Then you must pass a three hour 125 question multiple choice exam with a score of 70% or better. You also must certify every three years by earning 60 continuing professional education points. SSCP is seen as a relatively easy vendor neutral badge to obtain. The certification is one of the US Department of Defense approved baseline certification for both level one and level two information assurance technical certifications. Now let's discuss the domains it covers. The content of SSCB has been refreshed to reflect the most pertinent issues that information security practitioners currently face along with the best practices for mitigating those issues. Some topics have been updated while others have been realigned. The result is an exam that most accurately reflects the hands on technical IT skills and practical security knowledge required by practitioners to support an organization's mission and operations. Following are the domains of the certifications access control, security operation and administration, risk identification, monitoring and analysis, incident response and recovery, cryptography, networking and communication security, systems and application security. So next on our list of certifications, we have CEH. The Certified Ethical Hacker is an intermediate level certification focused on the prevention of most common attacks and securing systems and networks. CEH is designed to ensure a strong understanding of hacking practices including footprinting, recognitions, scanning networks, SQL injections, worms and viruses, DOS attacks, social engineering, and honeypots. CEH certification requires successfully completion of a 4-hour 125 question multiple choice cybersecurity examination with a minimum of 70% score. With the increasing number and awareness of cyber attacks, the certified ethical hacker resonates with many employers. However, there is some debate about the value of the certification. In terms of difficulty, the EC Council maintains a tight control over entry to the certification exam. In order to be eligible to attempt the CEH exam, it requires that candidates attend an EC Council official training program or provide employer verified proof of at least two years of information security experience. The CEH exam is further categorized as core, advanced, and expert. However, the general domains include information systems and networking, security controls, recognitions fundamentals, network attacks, system and device attacks, regulations and policies and ethics. So next on our list of certifications again is CISA. The Certified Information System Auditor or CISA is ICACA's validation for audit control, assurance and security. The main responsibility for a CISA is to assess vulnerabilities, report on compliance and institute controls within an enterprise system. This world renowned certification 
will certainly set you apart from the competition and allow you to work anywhere you want. While anyone can take the CISA exam, getting certified has the following requirements. So firstly, you need a year of experience in information systems or any qualifying educational degree. Next, you need to have an adherence to the Code of Professional Ethics and also an adherence to the Continuing Professional Education Program and compliance with the information systems auditing standards. The domains of CISA include the following acquisition, development, implementation, operations, maintenance, and auditing. Next on our list of certifications, we have CISM. The Certified Information Security Manager or CISM is truly a management focused certification. This is an ideal certification for seasoned IT managers, security managers, and CSOs. The CISM validates a vast range of cybersecurity skills and recognizes managers who promote these international security practices. If you are interested in IT security management, the CISM provides a multitude of opportunities. While anyone can take the exam, maintaining the certifications require 20 hours of continuing education every year and compliance with ICACA's Code of Professional Ethics. The CISM exam objectives include access control, identity management, security management, policies and procedures, intrusion prevention, network security, physical security, security tools, and security trends. In the CISM certification exam, you can get questions from the following domains. Information security governance, information risk management, information security program development, information security program management, and incident management and response. Next, we have the CRISC certification. Another ISACA certification, which is the CRISC, helps professionals develop a better understanding of how IT risk relates to the overall organization. By earning the certification, you'll develop the skills required to understand and manage corporate risk and implement the right security controls. CRISC is a program often endorsed as a necessity for C-suit executives as well as chief compliance, risk, and privacy officers. The exam will focus on four areas of risk identification, assessment, response, and monitoring and reporting, and requires a minimum of three years of relevant experience to apply. The domains in the certifications majorly cover the IT risk identification, IT risk management, control monitoring, reporting risk response, and mitigation. Next on our list, we have CISSP, the Certified Information System Security Professional, also known as CISSP, from ISC Square, is arguably the current gold standard of InfoSec certifications. It's an advanced level certification for IT security professionals and is recognized and valued by both industry and government employers worldwide. Like CASP, CISSP is approved as a DOD baseline for level three IAT security technicians. That's where the comparisons end. CISSP certification is designed for security professionals who develop information security policies and procedures. This is the most advanced certification we've discussed so far, and for many candidates, it may require up to a year to prepare for the exam. The certification exam is a six hour, 250 question monster, and in order to take the exam, you must prove that you have worked at least five years as a security professional, and you must subscribe to the ISC Square Code of Ethics. Once you are a CISSP certified practitioner, you must recertify every three years through at least 120 hours of continuing professional education, and you must pay a yearly fee of $85 to maintain your certification too. CISSP basically makes you a cybercrime investigator. It's intensive, but well worth it. Now let's see the domains of CISSP. So you'll be challenged in a number of cybersecurity domains, including security management practices, access control, cryptography, security models and architecture, telecommunication, and networking. Now you must be wondering, there are so many certifications, so how should I decide which is the best certification for me? Choosing the right certification is a bit of a challenge. So you need to introspect a bit and ask yourself three questions. The first question is, what experience do I have? Because of your experience, you can opt for entry level or the intermediate level or the expert level. While doing so, don't forget to do a ground level research of the certification exam you are willing to take and also the certification authorities. The next question that comes is, what are your goals? Are you looking to get into the technical aspect of security such as penetration testing or incident response or are you interested in advancing your career into the management side of security? Choosing the right entry level certification can be a bit tricky because on one hand there are certifications related to things that interest you but you have zero experience with. 
In this case, how does one obtain the experience? One simple word, volunteer. Volunteer your service in exchange for mentoring from an experienced professional. Another option is to seek out online communities and associations of professionals. Join these organizations and participate with them to gain experience needed. The third question is what positions are available? The practical side of selecting security certifications come from human resources. What positions are employers seeking to fill? Or more specifically, what positions are they seeking to fill in my geographical area? It is a good idea to do your homework to answer these questions. Take a look at the many job posting sites such as Monster. Search for openings using various certificate acronyms. So to wrap it up, let me tell you all that the trends show that cybersecurity threats will further escalate and the need for skilled and more certified cybersecurity personals will become more prominent than ever before. Earning certifications to validate your cybersecurity expertise can be an important asset to help you make a successful application for the next stop in your IT career path. So that was it from me for all the certifications that should be important to you in your cybersecurity career. Thank you and goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!